I had the opportunity to sit down with filmmaker Matt Liston, who is a sports documentarian and a sports activist. His films are about helping people in the sports world. He takes on challenges from small goals of connecting a fan to their idol, to big objectives like helping free an American football coach from a Chinese prison. Now whether he likes it or not, Matt becomes a character in these films, and he has to turn the camera around on himself. For over 20 years, Matt has been vlogging before the term vlog was even invented, so I had a chance to interview Matt in my studio and I had a conversation about storytelling because I wanted to hear how he crafts his stories around these challenging topics while also becoming a character in his own films. Going into story, what are some of the key elements that you need to tell a story? Personally, I always need a, a, to feel an emotional connection to whatever story I'm telling. And I think once you have that, you're able to tell the true story. I think that's first and foremost, is, is to feel that emotional connection with your subject. I also feel like what's helpful just from a structure, right? You need to have a moment right? You need to have a moment. So like being the sports activist. So if you're, if you're introducing some fan to their sports hero that they've dreamt 20 years to meet, you're going to have that meeting in that moment and that payoff. And so, you know, you can build around that moment, right? In the case of Wendell Brown, it was, the moment was going to be, and we were praying and working hard to make it happen. And we were successful, which is the moment he gets off the plane. He's released from prison. He gets off the plane. He gets to embrace his mom and his family. And we got that moment, that beautiful moment where everybody's hugging and everybody's loving on him and that homecoming. So for me, it's like you need the emotion. You need that moment, big or small. You need that moment that everything else will orbit around and you can build towards. You know, in terms of storytelling, I'm certainly not a fan. I'm not against it, but I'm not a big fan of linear storytelling, right? So as long as I know I have that moment to build around, you might have a flat point in the beginning of the film, right, of that payoff or the potential of that payoff. And then you can work your way back. I just, I don't like beginning, middle, end in a traditional sense. I definitely want to jump timelines. I want to, I want to interweave like twists and turns are always fun, right? So sometimes you have to have some fun with how you stack that in your storytelling. So you start with your payoff, your exactly. resolution, yeah. and then just work your way backwards. But in the case, sometimes you don't know if you're gonna have that payoff and that it, is, it can be risky, right? But it's like the goal, like you know there's something there, that's, that's right. what you're aiming towards, whether right. it happens or not. Because we've worked on projects together where the payoff doesn't happen. That's right, that's like right. The basketball story. That's right, and, and so if you don't get the big payoff you wanted, there's still a bit of a payoff. It just, you, you lost the game, you didn't win the game, and there's still a story to be told leading to losing the game. And it still takes you on an emotional roller coaster to get there. So is there any other components that are like essential to getting someone into a story? Like towards the beginning of a project, do you do certain things to set up what's gonna happen? I always believe, and again, this is pre-social media, but I think now, especially in the, in the age of social media, you need to have what I call the flashpoint in the very beginning of your piece. Like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And then launch backwards. <laughs> I'm a, Almost every film I've worked on, even if I don't direct it, I will somehow use my producer voice to make sure we have the beginning of that film has got to hook you and suck you in and make you feel like you're worthy to sit there, whether that film is 10 minutes or especially if it's a two hour film, you better have a heck of a flashpoint at the top of that, uh, that story. So you're saying a flashpoint is kind of like the thing that takes you on the journey. That's right. It's a big moment that big turns moment. everything big, usually big dramatic moment, visually dramatic, audio could be dramatic, and then you go backwards. So flashpoint, which is, like the tension of the story. Yeah. It raises the stakes and you're like, I wanna know how this ends or what happens next. And then you can launch back in time, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. What happens next? What? That's like a key thing Let to me, think. Yes, I'm glad you bring that up because that that is a, a big point here. I think in any film, long or short, you always have to be thinking, what's next? What's next? What's, next? what's the next thing they're gonna see? What's the next thing they're gonna hear? You need to know from shot to shot, what's next? What's next? What's next? If, if you're not thinking that way, then you're just wasting your time. How much do you set up in terms of writing a script versus figuring out in the field versus figuring out in the okay. edit? Usually it's an outline. I never go full script. It's, it's usually somewhat of a loose outline with, with key milestones, key moments I need to hit within that film, right? Mm -hmm. but, but I definitely leave a lot of wiggle room between those moments because a lot of great things happen organically, especially if you're lucky, right? <laughs> That's what you want. You want those organic moments that happen and they can twist and turn a bit. But, but I do think it's important to have somewhat of a layout and a structure in mind mind, there's wiggle room within that, within those beats. So you figure out more of your story 
in the process of shooting, let that kind of dictate towards this final moment, Definitely. the resolution, the edit, you really put it all together. I think there's, there's beats you need to hit, right? And there's moments you know you have, like going back to what we were talking about earlier, you, you, you have your big moment, right? But you, you can also have a moment that you already know about that might be a piece of archive footage, right? Something like that, and that's something that you can work around and build around. Um, I think you, it's, it's all about moments. Filmmaking, whether it's scripted or non-scripted, it's all about moments. You're gonna work with your one big key moment, right? But then you're gonna have some other moments that you can work around. But I, I, I think those kind of layout is your outline, right? But, but with that wiggle room to have organic things pop up, you might need to restack it later and that happens usually in post. So going back to just the story structure, flashpoint, big moment, is there any other key things that you really look for? Or you just look for those moments. I tend to build around moments, but I also think that my stories overall though, it's a, about emotion, right? And feeling something. I think it's essential to have characters you care for, people you care for, people you're rooting for. In my films, like you're always rooting for somebody and you're rooting for an outcome, right? So sports lends itself very well to that, right? You're, you're rooting for the win or the catch or to get into the game or to finally make it to the big leagues. Whatever it is, I think it's about emotion. You want you, because you want your audience to feel emotionally invested. And if you as a filmmaker aren't emotionally invested, you're not gonna be able to sell that quite well. <laughs> quite well, even with the greatest editor on the planet, you know. For a lot of your projects, you're a character in the film. You bake yourself in. You're not like an outsider. So it's a, yeah. it's more of this kind of YouTube perspective where we are creators making content and we are a central character. So how do you bridge that gap? How much do you put you into it versus focus on the actual story? It, you know, that can be tough to be quite honest. My first few films, I, I was not in them. Some of them I directed and some I just produced. As my career was moving along, I wanted to create these outcomes. It's kind of, it went hand in hand with becoming a sports activist where I wanted to create a change in the film, right? And I wanted to have a certain outcome. So then I just found, well, if I, if I put it on camera and I use my camera to help get that outcome, a lot of times I have to bring that camera back around. You know, I was doing it before the selfies, you know, before smartphones, I, I would turn my, my camera around. Like 20 years ago, I was working on my first independent film, Chasing October, and at times I had just like a little handy cam, but I would circle it back and say, here I am, and this is where I'm going, and this is what I'm doing, you know. I found that it, it helps the audience root for you and the struggle that you're going through to try to get this outcome. I liked using it as a, as a device to make the change that I was trying to create. Does that make sense? Like yeah. I wanted to help somebody inside the world of sports and I felt like I could do that better if I, I was on camera showing how I'm trying to make it happen so the audience could better understand the ups and downs and difficulty. It became, the, became a lot of the story. So you find yourself as like a vehicle to make that change happen. So the story ends up being about you trying. on this process to make this change. So you end up becoming a character. A lot of times, yeah. yeah, a lot of times that will be the case. And I'm to the point now where um, a lot of my projects get funded if I'm in them. That can happen, right? So it's like, okay, I want to do feel-good sports stories and I want to create uh, sports dreams. I want to make sports dreams come true, have some wish fulfillment or whatever. Well, like if I'm working for the NFL, for instance, like the NFL is hiring me because I'm Matt Liston, I'm a sports activist who helps people in his film. So of course I've got to be in those films, right? But in the case of like, for instance, Wendell Brown, I truly was just trying to help Wendell get home. And and so in that, in that case, I didn't really want to be on camera. I had to be in the end because I'm the one leading the social media campaign or I'm the one interviewing people about, hey, what do you know about this story? How can we get him home? Because a lot of that stories done over Zooms or, or phone calls or the app WeChat. So a lot of it's me having conversations. So unfortunately in that case, I had to be injected in it and I didn't want to be. For creators who want to do non-scripted documentary, vlog, whatever you consider it nowadays on any platform, what would be like a piece of advice to like start moving in that direction, start making these videos? Well, my advice is don't procrastinate, you know, do your homework. And then, but as soon as you have the information, like I said, information gathering is important, but also feel passionate about your subject. As soon as you find that subject, and again, it could be your neighbor down the street starting the pickleball league. But as soon as you find that person, go interview them, do it. Even if it's with your phone, your little DSLR camera, like whatever it is, just get started. If you're an aspiring documentary filmmaker these days, it's highly accessible. Don't procrastinate, do your homework, yes. Do your homework, find a subject you're passionate about. And again, it doesn't have to be two hours long. It can be a minute or two in length, but craft a story. It's all about storytelling and you can start today storytelling. Find that big moment, find that flashpoint. Find that big moment, find and, the flashpoint. And then start figuring out what the story is that you could tell to get from A to B. 
That's right. I mean, have you ever driven out in the country and you see like the foam poles, right? And, and you see them or the electrical wires and they sit here and they sit here and they swag, right? And they swag for miles, right? That's what you're crafting the story around. Th those poles, right? Those poles right there, those are your moments. That's your the moment you shot on camera. That's the unexpected moment you shot on camera. That's the archive footage. That's the interview where he dropped that big line you weren't expecting. And then everything else can be crafted around it. Those are the wires, right? And you're just bringing all those, I think you use the term threads, you know, threads at all together it keeps it under that umbrella like that's what storytelling is it's moment to moment to moment to moment so you're connecting moments connecting that's moments that's storytelling and yeah. moments people care about and they want to see what's next what's the next moment if you want to see more about matt and the different projects that he's working on i'll include some links down below in the description and if you want to see the full 30 minute interview talking about filmmaking storytelling and sports activism it's over on the creator film school I'll include a link down below in the description to where you can check that full interview out. And if you wanna see another video that's gonna help you on your storytelling journey, make sure you check out this video right here. And I'll see you on the next one.